Hello, and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be talking about process metrics. Every process should have one start, at least one end, couple of process steps, decision points and, in case things go bad, rework steps. We could also have shorter, or longer waiting times. While for decisions you should know how much of the volume goes on one path, and how much on the other. If someone would ask you to calculate the average time to get the job done, how would you do it? A simple way is to imagine you have 100 pieces of work and, you will calculate the average time for a single one. Are you ready for some basic math? All the 100 pieces go through the 5 minutes step, wait for 1 minute, do the 2 minute step and, end up in the decision point. Here, 90 pieces will just move forward to the 3 minute step. The rest of 10 pieces, will go down in the rework loop, and do the 10 minutes step, the 20 minutes waiting, do the 5 minutes, the 1 and the 2 minutes once again before finally going into the last step, of 3 minutes. So, the total time for getting all the 100 pieces done is 1480 minutes. If we divide this by 100 pieces we achieve a 14.8 minutes average time per piece. This 14.8 minutes is also referred as the process cycle time, and represents the average time that the customer is waiting for one piece to get done. But, this is not the best way to calculate it. What I want you to remember is the final result and, how the 10 pieces that went to rework, done the final 3 minute step. And now, let's see how we can do the calculations in a better way. Being able to calculate process metrics is crucial for understanding efficiency but also customer impact. In the next 2 minutes we're going to calculate and explain first time right, touch time, waiting time, lead time, rework and, cycle time. First time right is a percentage, and measures how many units go through a process without any errors, basically without rework. In our case, it's easy to see that 90% of the units, go through without any errors, while 10% enter the rework loop. So first time right equals 90%. Touch time represents the total time employees spend working on a unit, that follows the first time right situation. To calculate touch time we would need to sum up 5 minutes with 2 minutes and 3 minutes, and the result is obviously 10 minutes. And pay attention. Some of you might be tempted to wrongly calculate 90% multiplied with 3 minutes. But, I am sure that you remember from previous example, how the 10 pieces that enter the rework loop, eventually end up doing the 3 minutes. So, in the end state, we will have 100% of the units reaching the final step of the process. Similar to touch time. Waiting time follows the first time right path of the process, and in our case, we have one minute of waiting between step 1 and step 2. You might be tempted to also add the 20 minutes, which would not be wrong as a concept, but it's part of rework and we will be taking care of it once we get there. Moving forward, lead time is a key metric of your process. It shows in how much time your units would go from start, till end, if there would be no errors. This metric is the sum between touch time and waiting time. So, in our case, we see that customers can get one unit in only 11 minutes if we would have no rework. To calculate it we need to sum, rework touch time and, rework waiting time. As you can see, only 10% of the volumes go down this path. So, rework touch time is 10% multiplied with all the steps that need to be performed to fix the error, 10 plus 5 plus 2. For rework waiting time, we have the same 10%, multiplied with the 20 minutes, and the 1 minute waiting time. So, my rework loop has 1.7 minutes of touch time and 2.1 minutes of waiting time, in total, 3.8 minutes. And finally, cycle time. Cycle time is the sum between lead time and rework, and with no surprise it is exactly 14.8 minutes, same as before. So yes, we got to the same result, but now we know so much more about our process. We can easily calculate process efficiency, which is touch time divided by cycle time. So, employees working on this process, are in 67.5% of their time doing something other than waiting, or rework, which we already know that it is waste. Also, greatly important, we can finally extract the processing time, which is cycle time minus avoidable waiting time. If you remember from my previous videos, processing time is used to calculate capacity. So avoidable waiting time means those waiting times in which employees are not blocked, but can actually work on something else. In our case, we are talking about those 20 minutes from the rework loop, in which an employee can work on another unit. So processing time is 14.8 minutes minus 10% multiplied with 20 minutes, which equals 12.8 minutes. 
Congratulations! You are now able to calculate capacity and have a great understanding regarding process metrics. Thank you for watching this video until end. Do you calculate process metrics in the same way? Please write about your approach in the comments below. If you found the content valuable feel free to reward it with a like. Best of luck, and see you in the next video.